Hi, this is Tennille Feldbush, and today I'm going to discuss the proposal essay. Now, when you think of a proposal, you might think of a marriage proposal or a business proposal, but it really depends upon, of course, your essay assignment description, the rubric, information from your instructor. So you want to make sure you know exactly what uh, your general topic is and the assignment requirements. All right, so let's take a look at some ideas. My general course topic for my current course is organ sales or donations, so I'm going to use that as an example starting point for proposals. Uh, another starting point for your project or proposal is uh, for any of those projects um, or proposals, you want to make sure you know what type you're using. So the practical uh, proposal is a solution that is a project-based solution. So something uh, tangible in the real world, uh, something kind of similar to business proposal where something is created or constructed or um, a service is provided. A policy or law-based solution is more of a rule or law um, that uh, is government or administration or um, policy-based. So make sure you know your general topic as well as what type of uh, pol uh, policy or practical based solution you're going for. So read the assignment description to see those parts and pieces that you know your general topic and you know uh, what type of solution that you're going to devise. So the first place to start, of course, is to research your general topic, in my case, organ sales or donation, to find an issue in its specific context in the real world, something that's happening um, that you wish would be different, that you could solve somehow. So research your general topic, find something very specific in a context, perhaps in a business or an organization or a governmental process or rule or law that you would like to change uh, somehow. Then you will research different solutions and find, uh, find a solution you like, adjust it, or create your own, and then find arguments for why this solution is the best, reason why your solution whether it's a policy-based solution or a practical project-based solution is the best for this. So this is part of the brainstorming process. Find your specific issue and its context. Um, make sure it exists in the real world. Um, for instance, our organ sales or donation topic for my class, students might have already encountered an issue uh, that has struck them and uh, they wish they could solve it somehow, find a solution. Um, so if it's an idea that you've used uh, for another paper, that's okay as long as you start over because the proposal is a very different, a very specific structure that's different from any other essay. So make sure your issue is narrow enough that it actually exists, that you know the who, what, where, whys, and hows, um, in order to create a very specific solution. So for instance, do you know what this is? You may have seen these around at parks or apartment complexes. This is something tangible in the real world. Uh, somewhere, someone thought of the solution of doggy bags for the issue of poo in apartment complexes and uh, around parks and areas in the public. So this is a very tangible, real-world, practical solution. Now, a policy might be uh, in the apartment building, people could be fined for not picking up their poo, but this is a very practical solution for the issue of poo. So you want to make sure just like these bags that you have a very specific issue and solution so that you can illustrate it so the reader feels like they can really grab onto, okay, this is the issue and this is the solution before 
you really get them with your arguments for the rest of the paper, the second half. Um, that shows why your solution is the best to that issue. So in order to be well informed about your issue and the solutions, you'll need to do lots of research to see what already is out there, what opinions are out there, what solutions are out there, what rules and laws there are concerning your issue and so that you can start developing your specific solution. So think, is my solution uh, an altering of something that's already out there? Am I applying a new process or rule to an organization or government or situation? Or is this something completely new that doesn't exist? Is it a new uh, type of advertising campaign for organ donation? What is it that I want to see implemented in? Um, who's going to do it and how and what are the costs and benefits? So again, your idea should include uh, all the information about your issue and the solution should include the what or the who uh, that you're changing or doing and the process, the what, where, why, how, and the reasons why it will be the best solution to the issue that you've, you've demonstrated. So here are some examples. An example policy change for organ sales or donation. Under that general topic, uh, I have specific uh, a specific law or rule here to change or to implement. The National Organ Transplant Act of 1984 should be overturned to legalize organ sales in order to save more lives on the organ donor waiting list. So you can see I have my part of society or policy, uh, this very narrow one specific law, and I have my solution. It should be changed or overturned and I have my reason why um, the issue and the solution, the effect it will have, it will save more lives on the organ waiting list. Uh, the second part here, the second example is a project-based implementation. Phoenix Public Schools Administration should include organ donation awareness curriculum into the required social studies credits to increase the number of donors. So you can see that Purple, again, is the part of society or the very specific context, um, the players, the information involved in the real world. The red is the administration or the doer, the power um, that could actually make this happen. And the green is the solution, what exactly they're going to do. They're going to include a certain uh, curriculum and the reasons why or the issue that it will solve which is to increase the number of donors because perhaps there aren't enough donors um, and enough education programs to increase the donor, um, donor list here. Okay, so after you have your ideas, your issue and solution, research, 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 develop all the context and details that we've talked about, who are the powers, the players, the recipients, and also look at the cost and benefits because nothing's free, even the doggy bags cost something. Um, there's cost to time, there's cost to developing something. Well, let there be light. <laughs> and other details of the policy project procedure because you want to make sure you know your issue and your solution very well so the reader can buy into it. Uh, after you know your issue and solution very well and have um, delivered those, make sure you have research from your uh, academic peer review journal search to show uh, why your solution is the best. Find opinions about the issue, find different solutions out there, and brainstorm and outline why is your solution the best. Now we have come to the five paragraph essay structure. Uh, just like any other essay, you wanna have an introduction and uh, here's where it differs a little for this particular essay. Your introduction is going to be quite a few paragraphs because you have a lot to introduce. You're going to introduce and detail the issue and your specific solution to that issue or problem. So, 
uh, your solution should be a few paragraphs. Uh, the costs, those responsible who will enforce or carry out your proposal or solution, what are the, the benefits of it, everything about your solution so they can, the readers can really see it in the real world. And then your thesis statement will tie all of this together with your arguments that will be uh, your body paragraph uh, structure. So in this thesis statement uh, outline example here, A would be the powers or the context or the doers should do what your solution be because of C, uh, the issue that's happening and also your reasons. So part C could be uh, not only the solution but the reasons why your solution is the best to really get your reader ready for your body paragraph claims that will be next. So again, in red here, I have the outline of your thesis, the what or who should be first, and the solution or what should be done or changed because of what issue and reasons one, two, and three. So those issue uh, reasons, um, the solution reasons, um, how they're combined, how does your solution solve an issue uh, will become your arguments. Why is your solution the best? How does it address the issue in the best ways? What are some reasons why uh, it's the best solution? What does it do? How is it a benefit? How does it change? Uh, the issue, the situation, the society, the law, the rule, what happens. So you could start with your second best argument for a body paragraph and then have your weakest argument and then your strongest argument and then perhaps a rebuttal or uh, refute the other side, those who would believe that another solution would be the best. So again, for each body paragraph, have a different argument or reason or claim as to why your solution is the best, why it solves the problem in the best manner, better than any other solution. And here we are at the conclusion. Every essay should have a conclusion to summarize your arguments, uh, to leave also with a memorable thought because you want to grab the reader, you want them to remember your solution, and, and you want them to go out and use it, to do it. Like if you were writing to a very um, specific audience, the doer, uh, the powers that be, you'd want them to accept your proposal. Thank you for listening. Happy problem solving.